All right, now we've talked some about these ideas of nesting a data frame and then thinking of a recipe that you can apply across that. And we talked some about functions, which is actually kind of a way of encapsulating a recipe that you want to use. So now I wanna talk a little bit about the idea of being able to write a function or use a function that exists and map it across lots of different values in some objects. So either values in a vector or elements that are in a list, for example. So a lot of times, if you have a function, you wanna apply it multiple times and you wanna use different input every time you apply that. A powerful way to do that in R is by using list and then using some functions that are in the map family of functions from the per library to, to map that function across each element of the list or to apply it across each element of the list. There's a whole family of these functions in per. They include map, map2, and pmap and those um, depend on the number of different elements you want to map across. We're going to start by talking about map, and then we'll talk a little bit about map too in these slides, but you should feel free to explore pmap as well if you ever have kind of more parameters you need to map across. So the map function we're going to start with, and this works really well if you have a list and you want to apply a function to each list. So let's say that we have an object that we very creatively have called a list. And this is a list where the first thing in it is just, let's say, one to three. So this is gonna, that's going to be a numeric vector with the numbers one, two, and three. And then um, the second thing in this case is a vector with um, maybe like 32 and 14 and five. So, so again, three values. And maybe let's do even more. Let's do eight. So four values in that, but they're not in a row. All right, so if we come down and we look at a list, we can see we've got these two elements. In the first element called first thing, we've got the numbers one, two, three. In the second, it's also a numeric vector. It's got four values, and these are just, just kind of um, random numbers in this case. So we can load the per library, and let's leave uh, the tiny verse just in case as well in case we want to pipe or something. And now we can come down and we can explore mapping across this. So we'll do map, and then we'll say what we want to map across. So that's the thing where we want to go and take the first element and do this thing, and then take the second element and do the same thing, and then take the third element and do the same thing, and so on. So in this case, it's the list. We want to go over this list, and we want to take the first element. And in this case, we're just going to get the range of the numbers. And then we'll do the second element and give the range of the numbers. All right, so we'll map, and our I think the formal argument for this is dot x. So we'll do a list. And then this range function, if we do range, and we have like one to three, it'll give us the minimum and the maximum. So you can see that that's given one and three because one's the minimum and three's the maximum. If we did it with this vector, then that should be what, five and 32? All right, yeah, so that should give us five and 32. So if we wanted to do this process for both of the elements in the list, then we're doing our map, we're saying that what we want to map across the elements for is a list, and then we need to say what function we want to apply as we go in each of those elements. So in this case, it's that range function. We want to do this for each of those elements. So if we run that, you can see that it's gone through and it's returned a list for us where the first element is the output from applying range to the first element in the original list. And then the second element is the result from applying range, this function, to the second element in the list. All right, so this has gone through and this is showing you the example of the list. And here's the example of mapping that range function across each element in that list. So this works well also, not just when you have a list like this, but when you have a data frame with those list columns. So we can take a look and let's say that we had a tibble where we've got um, several different values that form part of the first thing and several that form part of the second. So let's do that A data frame. We're gonna do a tibble. 
And then we're going to put element for our first column. And this is repeating first three times and then second three times. There's a function called rep that we could do to repeat things like this as well, but here to keep things a little bit more straightforward, we won't use that. All right. So right now we just get a single column with this like first, 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 second, second, second. All right, and then the second thing that we want to put in is the measure. And so that'll be one, two, three, and then 11, 15, 20. All right, so we can take a look now. And we've got a very simple data frame where we've got these elements that we can group by, right? They're different. They're in a character um, right now, but they're, they're very clearly repeats of the same uh, type of element. And then we've got these measures over here. So we can group by the element in nest, and then we'll get all of that information on the actual numbers will be kind of compressed into these small data frames that fit in that list column, where it'll just be a simple data frame with three rows and one column. So we can take a look at that. Sorry, let's do group by the element and then nest. So we can see that that's kind of squished it down so that all of the information that used to be right in here for the first element got compressed into this first slot in the data, in the data column. And then the same for the second. And if we want, we can even take a look at that to kind of convince ourselves. So I'll assign this to the object nested data frame. That looks like this. And then if we, if we extract that, we can extract out data and then pull the first element. And I'm gonna use this double square brackets to kind of pull it all the way out so it's not a list anymore. So it's really getting down into the data frame. And you can see that that's just a single column tibble with those numbers that formed this little subset right here. So once we have it in this nested format, we can do mutate and we can do that same mapping to create this new column with the output from it. So we can take our nested data frame and we can do mutate. Let's take a look at what this looks like. So again, it's got this data column. So we're gonna mutate and we'll call this like maybe the number range. So that we're gonna get as a function of doing this mapping. We're gonna map, and in this case, what we're mapping across is our data column. So we wanna do the same thing to each element. We wanna go through for the data column, and we wanna do it first for this first one, and second for the second one. So we're doing that our x equals the data, and then next, we'll do that our function that we want to apply is range. So now we've got that and we've got it in that special type of column. So to get it back out, we need to do unnest and then calls equals this num range. So you can see that we've gotten those values now. And in this case, we've got, because that, that range outputs two values, we've got a minimum and a maximum for each of those. So these get repeated two times for each of the first and second values to give us the minimum and then the maximum. All right, there are other members of the map function as well. So that was taking one thing and applying the function across each element in that. But sometimes you might have two things where you wanna go and apply for the first element of both of those and then the second element of both of those. So this is a very simple example, starting from a vector. In this case, we've got a vector with first word and a vector with second word, and we want to paste these together so that we get open source, and then we get ride share, and then we get move point. So we can take this and we can map two with that. So let's create these two vectors. Oh. 
Okay, so first word is open and then ride and then mute. And then second word, source and share point. All right, so we can do map too. And then what we put in is dot x for the first thing we want to map across. So that's first word. Dot y is the second thing that we want to map across. That second word. So we want to take this and then this. And then we do our function. And in this case, we're going to do paste. So you can see that that's gone through. It returns a list to us. And for this list, it's taken the first element of first word the first element of second word and pasted those together when the function pasted on those two elements to get the first value and then done the same thing with the second set of values to get the second value in the returned and the same thing with the third and so on. This is showing that example again here. And then we can do that within a data frame as well. So we could start with this in a tibble where we had a column called first word and a column called second word. And then we could do mutate with this map two to do the same thing. That will give us this new column that's that special type of list column. And again, we can just use unnest and we should add in the calls equals here with a recent change to that. But we can do this unnest and we can get back to the state um, where we have it all as a, a classic kind of data frame where this column is now unnested to show the specific values.